Chapter 14 The Demons Misrepresent Christian Doctrine For we forewarn you to be on your guard, lest those demons whom we have been accusing should deceive you and quite divert you from reading and understanding what we say. For they strive to hold you their slaves and servants, and sometimes by appearances in dreams, and sometimes by magical impositions, they subdue all who make no strong opposing effort for their own salvation. And thus do we also, since our persuasion by the word, stand aloof from them, i.e. the demons, and follow the only unbegotten God through his Son, we who formerly delighted in fornication, but now embrace chastity alone, we who formerly used magical arts, dedicate ourselves to the good and unbegotten God, we who valued above all things the acquisition of wealth and possessions, now bring what we have into a common stock and communicate to everyone in need, we who hated and destroyed one another and on account of their different manners would not live with men of a different tribe, now, since the coming of Christ, live familiarly with them and pray for our enemies and endeavor to persuade those who hate us unjustly to live conformably to the good precepts of Christ, to the end that they may become partakers with us of the same joyful hope of a reward from God the ruler of all. But lest we should seem to be reasoning sophistically, we consider it right, before giving you the promised explanation, to cite a few precepts given by Christ himself, and be it yours as powerful rulers to inquire whether we have been taught and do teach these things truly. Brief and concise utterances fell from him, for he was no sophist, but his word was the power of God.